Uh, hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Ugh. Uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. Why didn't you wake me up? I tried to give you a nudge before I left, but you were practically comatose. How long has it been since you slept? Aside from being knocked unconscious, I'm not really sure. Anyway, I left you back at the lab to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Where have you been all night? I've been driving around, looking up old friends, thinking things over. Okay. So is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dip just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure, Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Oh, come on! Uh, yeah! Here, little static thingy. I can't reach it. Gotcha!
future is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wondrous wonder on display. Because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now, the future is coming today! Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure, but I was wondering. You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his booth? It's the tall one over there. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie her job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his boot? See you around. How about an algae king? Sure thing, mister. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? What? I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey! You're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice! Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, buster! How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you! Forget it, mister. Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. Excuse me, Mr. Duto, Jacques Duto, at your service. Could I get a ride in that bathosphere? Certainement, if you've got a ticket. Jacques Duto, famous diver. So you're some kind of celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following, yes. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less uh, uh, demanding. See you around. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Corleone. What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Michael Corleone really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Michael? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. 
But she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Emmett's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. Insert ticket to enter. I think that's supposed to be a clock. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Greetings, forward thinkers of Hill Valley. Hi, Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now, what can I do you for? So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and, of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. You seen Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah, he wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't! Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Is there anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? <sighs> I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. Uh, he did? But it was supposed to be a secret. There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Thanks. Happy to help. A potted plant? 
What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. Hey, don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. Casual. He's coming back. Shh, he's a... The Electro Pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. What's this about? What'd you do with them, Edna? What are you talking about? You're the one who's trying to ruin his life. Believe it or not, I'm the one trying to save it. From what? From you, mostly. You really don't know where Emmett is? I haven't the foggiest. If he's smart, he's run far away from whatever dangerous shenanigans you talked him into perpetrating today. Shenanigans? Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend, Mr. Sagan, told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. You don't really think Emmett's gonna want you back after you crushed his heart and tried to stop his demonstration at the Expo, do you? Not at first, no. But eventually, he'll realize I've got his best interests at heart, and he'll come running back to me like one of those dogs he loves so much. You hate dogs. Yes, ironic, isn't it? Why'd you go and get Emmett's invention sealed up like that? I had no choice. Once Mr. Sagan told me about your attempts to radicalize my poor Emmett, I knew I had to stop him from going through with your dangerous invention. But it's his invention, and it's not dangerous. Okay, maybe it's a little dangerous, but only to him. That's for the authorities to decide. Any chance you could talk Parker into letting Emmett go ahead with his demonstration? None whatsoever. And as long as I'm here, that contraption of yours is grounded. I know your deep, dark secret. Secret? What secret? You know what you were whispering about with Carl Sagan yesterday. You overheard? Sure I did. And you did a really lousy job at, uh, burying the body. Oh, you didn't hear a thing. What I was talking about with Carl Sagan is between me and Carl Sagan. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Why is Parker so willing to do your bidding? <laughs> well, the good detective knows that he owes his current rise through the ranks to my reporting on his behalf. Oh. He also knows that I could just as easily pen an expose about his previous nights of drunken debauchery and evidence tampering. You're blackmailing him? Reporters don't blackmail, Mr. Schmirnoff. We look out for the public interest. Okay, this is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. Well, 
Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? Comrade Schmirnoff, come to turn yourself in? In private? With pleasure. You've got to let Emmett demonstrate his invention. His whole future depends on it. I'd love to, kid, but Miss Strickland thinks it's dangerous. And unless you've got something on her, her word is pretty much law. Any idea where Emmett is? Well, he was working over by his booth. But by the time Edna got done haranguing me, he was gone. I hope he comes back soon so we can get this mess cleared up. What's a newly promoted detective like you doing hanging out in a science expo anyway? Are you kidding me? This is a great assignment! I get to sit around all day playing with nifty new crime-fighting gadgets, like this! What does that do? Hell if I know! Since when does anyone in Hill Valley listen to what Edna has to say? Ever since she helped take down Kid Tannen, she's had the mayor and the city council eating out of her hand. I'd be an idiot to ignore her, especially with my, uh, alcohol-heavy background. Boy, I wish I could catch her jaywalking or something. I'd throw the book at her. Yeah, but you never catch a dame like that breaking the law, darn it. You haven't seen Carl Sagan around here, have you? Nah. Isn't he still a wanted man? Nah. All those arson charges got dropped weeks ago. Judge Brown said there wasn't enough evidence for a trial. Thanks. I'll be back. Oh, I hope so. You've got to get this albatross off my neck. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Now, where were we? Enlightenment awaits you under the... Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea less delightful. Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. fully equipped home entertainment center. So, where's the ColecoVision? In the house of the future, fresh fruit baskets will be replenished daily by fleets of fruit-bearing helicopters. Ah, oh, it's wax! Like 4385. Brown Hey, Hampton. How's it hanging? This is Marty, Emmett's friend. Is he there? Not at the moment. I'm afraid he's off on one of his little adventures. Thanks. Bye. Farewell. Conversation terminated. Greetings again, mortals! This is Techni, Muse of Progress, hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. In the house of the future, please resurrect. 
Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. About that plan. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh, that was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come galumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away. And I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. Well, we should probably get back to the plan. Yes, we should. Goodbye, Mr. Sagan. Goodbye. Hang up. Conversation terminated. In the mood for fun, the house of the future comes equipped with a modern home entertainment center. Chinese checkers and everything. one in here. Would you like to? Yeah. Un okay, call me a snoop. Four, two. Hill 
Valley Expo, Techni speaking. Who's this? Hi, Trixie. It's me, Michael. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I was just checking out this snazzy phone. Okay, bye. Bye. Conversation terminated. In the house of the future, we'll Period. Hang up. This is Anthony. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Mr. Closeoff. Closeoff? Yes, first name Oliver. Oliver Closeoff? Listen, kid, I didn't just fall off the poutine truck. Who is this really? Hang up. Conversation terminated. In the house of the... Please resilience. Klondike. Yep. This is Anthony. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Mr. Closeoff. Closeoff? Yes, first name Oliver. Oliver Closeoff? Listen, kid, I didn't just fall off the poutine truck. Who is this really? Hang up. Conversation. In the house of the... Klondike 4 to... Jeez, always with the phones. Yeah? It's Kid Tannen. I'm out of jail and I want you back, baby. I don't know who you are or why you're doing that horrible impersonation of Kid, but that part of my life is over. I've gone legit. Conversation terminated. Good for you, Trixie. In the house of the future, we Klondike. Yeah? It's me, Carl. Oh, hi, Mr. Sagan. What can I do for you? Can you get Edna on the phone for me again? You got it, Mr. Sagan. Hey, your highness! Mr. Sagan, you really have to stop calling me like this. I've got to keep all of my attention on Detective Parker. Yes, yes, of course. I've just got a couple more questions. I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my poll with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration canceled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh, yes. He's a very distractible young man. That's what I keep telling everyone. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez. Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in Pond Scum. Welcome, Ernest Fiddlepot! Thanks, Trixie, uh, uh, Technique. I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy-headed type people. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of Pond Scum. LG, ladies and gentlemen, is a mysterious and little-known biological entity. Through diligent study and countless hours... You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned out all the those speakeasies. This noble I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. ...discoveries to our disbelieving world. 
algae cakes, ladies and gentlemen, is the next wave in the agricultural revolution of the 20th century. Oh. Algae is Hello. just loaded. Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? I thought you'd never ask. Along with enough protein to shook a horse. Now, you know how you said you defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? On yeah, you got some? Edna's the speakeasy arsonist. That's an interesting theory. It's the truth. I heard her confess. Well, I didn't hear it, so I'm afraid it's your word against hers. And no offense, but her word carries a little more weight around here than yours does. Thanks. Uh, well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Well, Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This will only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Shh, listen. You know... I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for hey. that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Hiya, folks! I'm glad Trixie got her old job back. I wonder how she managed it. Emmett's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. in here. Hey, Artie. Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic what's for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. Have you seen Emmett? He isn't at his booth. Odd. Well, he hasn't left the hall. I would have seen him. I'm sure he's around here somewhere. See you around. How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you. Forget it, mister. Mr. Duto? Oui? I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A distracted look? That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were added into the house of glass. Great, thanks. Hey, Emmett, come out of there. Don't listen to him.
Perfect. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He, he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. Emmett? Where'd you take him now, Doc? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. <laughs> Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a tall, thin, older gentleman. He might have been with a tall, thin, younger gentleman. I know just who you're talking about. Hey, just left about a minute ago. If you hurry, you might catch that. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of marine biology, but I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with Emma? Stop! Emmy? Help! I'm being attacked! Michael! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors! You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy is obviously uh, confusing. I'll say he is. You want I should toss him out on his ear? That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jock Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please, keep it down. The Expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duto. We can't afford to antagonize him. But if you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm going to have you expelled from the hall.
Professor Duteau, uh -huh. huh? At your service. Hmm. What have you done with the real Professor Duteau? I'm not sure I like your insinuations. I'm not sure I like you kidnapping Emmett. Perhaps I should call the authorities and have you removed from the hall. You're a cold-blooded guy, Duto. Say la vie. Where'd you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called a bathosphere. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I'm gonna take a closer look at that bathosphere. Not without a ticket, I'm afraid, sir. Hey! Is this guy trying to bum a free ride? No. See that you don't. Feels good to be on the right side of the law. <laughs> You're not gonna get away with this, you know. As they say in my country, que sera, sera. Mm. Here's my ticket. I want to see inside that bathosphere. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. Now give me a break. That Trixie got her old. Nah. I don't think so. Maybe not. Experience the wonder of the continuo phone. Well, it's already got me wondering how the heck to pronounce it. How about an algae cake? An algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you. Forget it, mister. Hey, Artie. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure, that's a pee ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm, there must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refused to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bathroom's for you. Mon Dieu, what is the matter? The gears, uh, they must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on the problem. Perhaps if you come back later. Come down, please. The bathosphere exhibit is currently closed for repairs. Oh, wait. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit? Hey, folks? Woo! If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. Uh-uh. I'm only giving this to Emmett. Now 
Now that I've recorded Edna's confession, I don't want to risk erasing it. It may be quite some time before the exhibit is... ...fixed. I'm not going anywhere. Uh-uh. I'm only giving this to Emmett. Step back! You're cripping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. That's better. Mercy. Step back! You're cripping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. It's an old nautical superstition that crimp horse needs imminent doom. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. But there's not. Can't you see he's messing with us? There's nothing wrong with those gears. Monsieur Dutot is doing his best to fix the exhibit. Hovering over him like that doesn't help the situation any. I command you uncrimp that hose! Funny, you'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I... I don't know who, what you're talking about. It's as if you two were connected somehow. Hey! I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you wouldn't. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? You ready to drop the act now, Jacques Duteau, a.k.a. Carl Sagan, a.k.a. No! Emmett gets nowhere until you raise the bathosphere. Uh, Emmett? Who? Emmett, you. I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you wouldn't. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? Emmett gets nowhere until you raise the... Uh, Emmett? Who? Emmett, you. You ready to drop the act now, Jacques Duteau, a.k.a. Carl Sagan, a.k.a.? No! You ready to drop the act now, Jacques... No! Emmett gets nowhere... Uh, you. You know what happened. Step off the holes! Raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it! Then neither will I. I'm not going anywhere. No, I guess you're not, but I can't wait here all day. I've got an expo to run. So for all the years, they have become unstuck. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Let's get you out of there. Uh, Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, you. Hey, he just took that guy's wallet. I think he took his wallet. Oh. Remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush. I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where did he go? You know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. 
No, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress, and it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? It wouldn't be the first time the world was changed by a kid barely on That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are gold. She was only 19. Wish me luck. So hold your snickers. Don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of one Emmett Lethra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity! I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father! Where is he? Hand him over this instant! The longer you hold out, the harder it's going to be for you! Emmett! Shh! Don't give me away! I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Just jump in the levitator and go. What's he gonna do? Shoot me down with an anti-aircraft gun? Come on, Emmett, you can't miss your big moment. You don't look very dignified crouching down there, you know. Better undignified than dead. Let me talk to him. <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Come on, Mr. Uh, Judge, sir. You're kind of making a scene here. Wrong. I am stopping my son from making a scene here. Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything... So he is up there with you! Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second! I'm counting to four! I'm... I want to speak to my son! Emmett's not ready to talk to you, uh, directly. I suppose you're his mouthpiece. I guess so, yeah. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. Can you two have it out later? You mean after he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah. No! If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. You dare to disobey it! So, is your client prepared to make a statement? He says it's no use talking to you. You never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Just go deal with them. What have you got to lose? Well, that's what they said to Custer. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot.
Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like Let's to be young. Understand. You don't know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. You. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on wins. where they must. This is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. <laughs> a childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. And it's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kind of... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, and maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it there are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well... Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to. Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Emmett? Here to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? I really think he means it this time. He won't listen to me. Okay, so he's got a strong personality. Strong personality? Lord save us from strong fathers. Why couldn't I have been born to a nice, wimpy milk toast? Yeah, well, that's no picnic either. The important thing is, fathers can change. Says you. He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but... What's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! 
You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator. Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator. I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer. Doc! Go away! But... Move! Move! Party! Oh my god! Doc! Say something. Chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean... I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh. I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc. Come back. Have you been out here the whole time? Emmy, um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! And you're, you're not discouraged? Discouraged? By what? You mean what happened in there? Oh, that was a learning experience. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I'm, I'm fine. 
You don't sound fine. Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... There's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? Guarantee it. Same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? I came to stop you from marrying Edna. Edna Strickland? I could never marry her. I mean, she was my first love, but after she broke my heart and tried to sabotage my career, I never saw her again. Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on the early grave. So that's how she got her job back. He's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait. And a Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! 
Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. How? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. Did your son just marry a Canadian saloon singer named Trixie? Artie? Pshaw, that boy ain't got nerve to ask a girl to the church social. You acquainted with him? Only slightly. Oh, well, just passing through, we hope. Tell us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it, a hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. When did Hill Valley go away? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who can tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite, please. We gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? It's a... Shh. Look! Shh. What do you see? This vehicle has sustained some serious damage. Way to stay focused, Doc. Mary Pickford. Mary Pickford. A blacksmith sign. I wonder if it's from Doc's old shop. Look! Shh. 
I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. old saloon sign cool too bad it's all burnt step away from the cabin <gasps> pardon us for intruding madam we were wondering if you could tell us I don't talk to hooligans I'm a very friendly sort. Doc, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Mystery. Who are you? Michael Corleone. That's a foolish name. And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? You tried to have me arrested once, a long time ago. Remember? Listen, Sonny. I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is... I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past. Because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. Edna's grandfather, Marshall Strickland. That's the same picture I saw in Edna's apartment, way back, in the future. What? It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. I brought you this. I ain't interested in flowers. Wait do you hear? And I especially ain't interested in talking flowers. Put them away. I brought you these tickets to the expo. What expo? The expo you left when you swiped the DeLorean and jumped back in time. Stop messing with my brain. I don't know nothing about time travel, and I never did. 
And what's more, I never talk about the past! I brought you... him! Him? Who oh, him? Him who? Look hard! Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend! My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um... he's all grown up. Come closer, fella! Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. It can't be! Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. It is! It's October 13th, 1931! Oh, and you are Emmett! Emmett! Oh. How did I get so turned around? Have I been dreaming, or... Well, stay there! It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. You've come back! Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tiff. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Oh. Uh. Schnookums. Uh, uh, Schnookums. Oh, you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic what's Um, okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh... What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh! He's after me! Ha! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the future! Curses! I can't shake him! Well, no use in holding back now. Let's see what this baby can do. And here it comes! Yes? Here what comes? I, uh, I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come to think of it, how can I be expecting something unexpected? At, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Not 
not sure what that'll do. Can't you move a little faster, Danny? He'll never catch me in this car. It's about to do something unbelievable. Not sure what that'll do. This hat doesn't frame her face very well. Can't you move a little faster, Danny? He'll never catch me in this car. It's about to do something unbelievable. Not bad. I don't suppose the flux capacitor still works. I build my parts sturdy, but not that sturdy. Help me figure something out. Yes? She's waiting for a time jump. I know, but that DeLorean's jumping days are behind it. Still, maybe there's some way to simulate the experience. Explain something to me, Doc. Edna jumped to the past and made Hill Valley disappear, right? That's the working hypothesis. Then how come we're still around? Whatever Edna did to Hill Valley must have happened so long ago that the ripples in the time stream haven't caught up with us yet. So, how long do we have before the ripples catch up with us? Oh, I'm sure we've got at least an hour before everything goes to hell. Great. If we don't restore the timeline, I'll never be born, r right? Probably not. But even if we do restore it, my grandpa's gone and married the wrong woman. Either way, I'm hosed. One crisis at a time, Marty. Right now, let's worry about getting the full story out of Edna. Edna used the DeLorean to jump into the past. I wonder why she never jumped out again. Put yourself in her shoes. Unexpectedly propelled into the past by an unreliable time machine. Would you risk another trip? I might. Maybe we could check the time circuits to find out what day she landed. We could, if there's anything left of the time circuits, but I'm afraid they rusted out long ago. I'll figure something out. I'm sure you will. Help me figure something. Yes? When do you think it died? The DeLorean, I mean. That vehicle hasn't been operational in a very long time. My guess is, whatever happened to Hill Valley also happened to it. When do you think it died? That vehicle happened to... You know, I've been dealing with Edna Strickland a lot lately, and I've seen her old and I've seen her young, but I've never seen her so... That shit crazy? Right. I still can't believe my grandpa married Trixie. Well, what are we gonna do about that? It's a dire situation, but I'm afraid I'll have to take a back seat to unraveling this unspeakable catastrophe. I'll figure something out. Can't you move a little faster, Danny? He'll never catch me in this car. It's about to do something unbelievable. Not sure what that'll... Edna's grandfather, Marshall Strickland. That's the same picture I saw in Edna's apartment way back in the future. Where? Back! Back! To the past!
past. What do you see? Hill Valley. But it's all different. It's so small and primitive. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by... I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man! This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure. But all the buildings are so sturdy and well kept. And the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century. And I know the reason why. Why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? This big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen. Yes! Good guess. Look at it. Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh, a... A what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. Here's something that'll make you remember. Remember what? I don't like to remember. Who are you? What are you doing in my yard, you hooligan? No, Edna. No yard. What? This is Emmett speaking. It's October 13th, 1931. Yes. And something's about to happen. Better not talk to her directly. It'll break the spell. Not sure what that'll do. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what... I wonder what's cooking. No, you're doing it all wrong. It'll never burn like that. First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. Isn't it beautiful? The devil's 
and they were consumed by the fires of righteousness! <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh oh. What is it then? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in New Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> but I lay it all too thick. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed my fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story, am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals hey. to... You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months' worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. I think I liked it better on the outhouse door. <laughs> I'd better not get too close. Not sure what that'll do. <laughs> I'd better not get... I'd better not get too close. I think I liked it better on the outhouse door. Better not get not sure what that'll do. Not sure. I think I liked it better on the Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll. <laughs> I'd better not get too close. I think.
Who's there? Edna, stop. It's just me. Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was gonna ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. I don't like shooting women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! If you shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up. Edna, stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out, unless somebody manages to disarm both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? Dolores Miskin? Dolores Miskin? Maybe I could jump him. I gotta find some way to snuff out Edna's torch without getting her and Doc killed. Hang in there, Doc. If I don't figure out some way of dousing that flame, Edna's gonna burn down the town. Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. Man, this thing is not light. Mary Pickle. It's right over his head, but I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. Why are you so hellfire determined to meddle in my affairs, woman? You've been a burr in my behind for over a month now. You're the source of the hellfire around here, Tannen. I'm just fanning the flames a little. Lady, I'm just giving the hard-working folk of Hill Valley a place to play some cards, look at some dancing girls, and knock back a few drinks. Exactly. The sandbag's right over Tannen's head. Hang in there, Doc. If I don't figure out some way of dousing that flame, Edna's gonna burn down the town. Not quite. Not quite. Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. I wonder what's in these. Oh, stop. Quiet. God. What the hell? Oh, cow crap. There goes all my pickled pig's feet. Maybe we can come to a more peaceable solution, Mr. Tanner. Keep your dick. Going down. Looks like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of Gomorrah, Tannen. <sighs> All right, physics. There's a sandbag over Tannen's head. I wonder if I can get something over Edna's torch. What kind of odds would you give me that I can disarm you and douse the young lady's torch simultaneously? About the same odds that you can walk out of here without getting a shot to the gut, stranger.
Well, there's a sandbag over Tannen's head. Dressed like that. I wasn't planning on visiting the 19th century. Hang in there, Doc. Dolores missed. The sandbags right. If I don't figure out some. What was that noise? What noise? I didn't hear a noise. A hundred years from now, he'll... Well, there's a sandbag over Tannen's head. I wonder if I can get something over Edna's torch. I can't reach it, and even if I could knock it down, Edna be free to torch the place. Are you here to haul me back to 1931 for my supposed crimes? Or is there some sort of time court for that kind of thing? Time court? What in the name of Ulysses S... Not sure why I did that. sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure. Say, that's a lovely chandelier you've got there, Tannen. Is it French? French? No, I got it off a wagon that had the misfortune of being robbed the week before I struck it rich in Nevada City. What kind of art? Not sure what that... you dressed like that? I wasn't planning on visiting the 19th century. To... Okay, that was lucky. It won't be long now. We'll just see.
The ammo's in place. Now to pull the trigger. The ammo's in place. Not sure what... Mary Pickford? Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Come on. Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Come on, you son of a... the hell are you? I'm the diversion, butthead. Nice one, Doc. Don't tell Clara. She thinks Fisticuffs set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. Edna's DeLorean. We gotta stop her before she hits any more power. Come on! to be worried about. You're a smart woman with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! Well, what's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she'll manage to accelerate 88 miles an hour anytime soon. How are we going to stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate self put all over the lawyer have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux synchronization modules. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes. But we might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate Roy's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to win both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate glory. At least that's the theory, anyway. That's a great plan, I think. Best of all, we won't need to weld the modules to the frame. We'll just snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Good question. Aha! A hoverboard! It saved our hides a few times before, so it seemed like the appropriate tool to bring along for the job. Sweet! You okay? It's just like riding a bike. Ready to make the jump? Ready, Doc. One, two, three, jump! Whoa. Nice form, buddy. Out of reception on the wireless. Great. Where'd you get these? From Burns Cash on 21st Century Video Game Consoles. Now remember, all you've got to do is attach the functioning modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. Get to 
talk to her from here. Now that it's synced. It's locked! Is that one of the flux emitters? Yes, now plug in the flux sink. I can't reach it from here! I just have to climb onto the top. Should I disable it? Leave it alone. It's not a good idea to monkey with nuclear reactors. It's one of the flux emitters. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what... Sneak past the rear view mirror. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that. No cross those flames, they may be radioactive. I don't even like crossing through normal flames. It's one of the flux. I can't reach it from here. I just have to climb onto the top. what that'll do. We're almost home, Marty. Just 
Then I must be back in... Would you be kind enough to tell me what day it is? It's the day I place you under arrest for arson, resisting arrest, and being a general all-round pain in the what? ass. No! You can't arrest me! Not now. I just got back from the last century. Would you look at that? Edna Strickland, drunk as a skunk. I'm not drunk, you reprobate. I'm a time traveler. Sure you are. Oh, I'm loving this. I I'll prove it to you. Come with me. We can do the whole day over if you want. We can fix everything. We can start by drying you out. Come on, into the station with you. You can bunk with me, doll. I'd rather die. Stop it! Unhand me, you dolt! Well, I guess that's it for Edna. Yes, I suppose it is. You know, whoever said time heals all wounds didn't know squat about time travel. What do we do about that, DeLorean? No need to do a thing. Ever since we synced up the time circuits, the temporal breakdown in Edna's DeLorean has accelerated at an exponential rate. By my calculations, the timeline should catch up with it in five, four, three, two, one, now! 
What the hell? Hey, Parker, you're not gonna believe this. See? what I say? Ready to go home? Wait, Doc, the timeline's not fixed yet. Look. Michael, you missed all the fireworks at the expo. Yeah, so I heard. Listen, I heard a rumor about you two. I guess we gotta come clean. Ta-da! Hottie took me to Reno last night. Try to keep a secret in Hill Valley. <laughs> well, you're gonna congratulate us or what? Then it's true. My grandpa's married the wrong grandma. I'm done for. Hey, are you feeling all right, kid? You don't look so hot. Artie, you can't do this. You're not supposed to get married for another five years. Well, I know Trixie and I were taking things slow. But after that witch Edna got me fired with that postcard, well, we kind of accelerated things a little. The postcard? Oh, man. This just isn't right. Now, I know marrying a Canadian for a work permit isn't strictly by the book, but pay. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love. <sighs> Isn't he just the sweetest? Can you see through me? Nope. Never could figure you out. I thought you'd be thrilled for us. You don't understand. You're supposed to marry Sylvia Miskin. But I did marry Sylvia Miskin. What? You didn't think my real name was Trixie Trotta, did ya? Don't feel too bad. It was kind of a surprise to me, too. Wait a minute, your Grandma Sylvie? Grandma? Hey, how old do you think I am, kiddo? Uh, but you're so... so skinny and blonde and... Huh. Yeah, you know, it's I amazing think, what oh I'm like you as a do I've you. seen you naked. Your Sylvia? Huh. You okay, pal? Yeah, I'm fine. Great. You kids go off and have yourself a wonderful honeymoon. And don't worry about your dad, Artie. I'm sure he'll come around. Come around to what? Um, to approving your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. Well, that was before I got a look at her. Besides, as my dear old father Seamus used to say, no sense in getting riled up over something I can't do nothing about. And honestly, now that I met her, I can't imagine a better daughter-in-law than the charming Miss Sylvie here. Aw, thank you, Dad. As for you, stranger, I'll thank you to not go poking your nose in McFly family business. It's been a pleasure, Agent Corleone. See you in the funny papers, Mikey. Goodbye, Grandma. You know, I took some pictures of Trixie in 1931. Hey, that's my grandma you're talking about. Good old 1986. May 14th? 15th. Best to build in a little lag time. Gives you a chance to catch up. Looks like the estate sale is still going on. Hey, don't you want to stay, Doc? You gotta stop the bank from selling off all your old stuff. What are you talking about? Estate sale? Bank? I'm not dead, Marty. Clara and I are having a little garage sale, that's all. Garage sale? You mean... Marty, you're back from your trip. Hello, Doc. Selling off the family treasures, eh? Uh, not quite, but I hope you find something you like. Speaking of which, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I sure did. Great! Hey, is that a box of Asimov? Let me get this straight. Are you telling me you live here now? In 1986? Well, naturally. Claire and I maintain a part-time residence here. Wasn't that the case when you left? No. Strange. I can't imagine not sticking around. After all, I've got my late father's foundation to supervise. If I wasn't here, who'd present the annual Earhart Brown Scholarship for young scientists? <laughs> Something funny? I'll explain it to you later. I don't see what's so funny about looking after a family legacy. Oh, almost forgot. I've got something for you.
Happy graduation. Graduation? But that's not for another. The McFlies of Hill Valley. An exhaustively detailed history of your family. From your great great grandfather Seamus to the present. You traveled through time to write this? Well, most of the research was done traditionally, but your grandma Sylvia proved to be something of a mystery. Which is why you traveled back to 1931 to look for her. Exactly. Who knew she was singing in a speakeasy on her stage name? This is great, Doc. Thanks. Uh, it's the least I could do for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Yoo-hoo! Dr. Brown! Edna? Heine! Uh. What's going on? What are you doing on my door? The same thing I do every afternoon, silly man. Giving him such much needed exercise. Isn't that right, Einstein? Hey, Dollface, it's past time for our 3.30. Coming, sweetie. Oh, Mr. McFly, have you seen my stepson anywhere? Oh, Biff, I think you're late for an appointment. Oh, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> you're right, Mr. McFly. Hi, Marty. Don't they make a great little family? You'd never know they met in prison. Don't say anything. Let's just walk quietly into the lab and hope there are no more surprises. Marty, you can't be here. If your younger self sees you, the consequences could be catastrophic. My younger self? Oh, right. Bring him along, too. This concerns all of us. What do you mean? Does something happen to us? Do we turn into assholes or something? Nah, we're fine. But our great-great-grandkids? What the hell? Great Scott. Doc, you gotta come back with me. Back to Don't listen to him, Doc. It's me you gotta help. If you want to save Jennifer and our 12 kids. What? That timeline was overwritten five jumps back. Doc, Jennifer's how picture. can there be two more of me here? I have no idea. My all rights of space-time continuum should be tearing apart like a cheap dish rack right now. It already is. What my evil twin and I are trying to say is the future is totally jacked up. And you gotta come with me to save it. No, me. So... We meet at last. You've altered my timeline once too often. What's going on, Doc? Well, we do seem to have a conundrum on our hands. Or three. Yeah, Doc, but which one is the real me? Isn't it obvious, Marty? Come on! Prepare to be erased. Doc, wait! What about the space-time continuum? Yeah, what about my future? And mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. Where to, Doc? Mr. McFly, thrill me. <laughs> 